everyone wants to know this. Um, how did this come about? And I guess to spin it a little bit, why did you each personally decide this was going to happen? And then a the bigger picture, how did this happen that you all came back to? Oh, it gave us the joy of the other eight episodes. That's a good spin. That's a good, we haven't had that spin yet. That's a good spin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I guess it's, start, well, first it started because we kept, we kept doing stuff together. We kept touring. Right. And, and when we were touring, we got, we got bored of doing uh, material that everybody knew all the jokes to. <laughs> And so we started writing new stuff and, and, and realized that we, uh, we liked, we liked the new stuff we were writing. And so that kind of put it in our heads that maybe we should try to find a way to, to, to shoot that stuff. And, uh, and then around just before our, what would have been our 30th anniversary back in 2018, I mean, I, I started bugging Broadway video saying we should do something for our 30th anniversary. And, uh, that eventually led to this, this thing with all of us signing on to do uh i mean it took it took uh a little over three years <laughs> with a with, with a year off from for a pandemic in the middle of it um but uh yeah so that, that was kind of it it's just uh that we we were create it was spurred creatively just by the stuff we were writing and just time wise it, it seemed like a you know like it was maybe time to get together and, and do something right so you were the and the personal reason would be the same as everyone else's. I think we'd uh, we're all uh, we're always happier creatively when we're together. The five of us. I mean, there's a lot of not me, but the others have done great solo work and um, uh, a lot to be proud of. Um, but even they would have to admit that they probably feel better creatively when it's the five of us together. Even the four successful ones would have to admit yeah. that. Well, I think I think I definitely. I remember at one point uh, turning to my wife and saying. It'd be nice to do something special again, you know. And the kids in the hall was was you know the kids in the hall was special, and uh, you know in, in our lives. So uh, it, it was just that feeling of doing something that uh, you know that, that uh, where we'd get to really express ourselves. Right. Well, yeah, like you said, you've been touring now for a while. Sort of after the show finished, and you've done uh, Brain Candy, you've done uh, Death in Town. Uh, yep. And and, and so. When did you start the the onstage uh, live performance? Uh, well, that's, like four years after Brain Candy bombed. Yeah, like two, not, yeah, it was two <laughs> yeah two thousand. Okay, four years yeah four years yeah four years after the our, we 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 shot our our uh, our film career in the foot. Yeah, and, and we thought uh, it was over. We thought the kids in the hall were they were over. Like that we'd be friends. Uh, Dave and I became friends again, and everybody was friends, and we'd be <laughs> we thought we'd be friends forever. But um, I, I can't say I, th I thought the kids in the hall were dead because I wasn't thinking about it. Um, I, uh, you know, it was a uh, move to Los Angeles and uh, go, go to pilot season and, and things like that. And um, and then yeah. um, our lawyer manager at the time, um, a couple of managers said that uh, there's demand for you if you tour. Because here's the thing that happened that we didn't know. We were on uh, CBC in Canada and HBO and then CBS in the States. And uh, we got good reviews. And when people asked, uh, how are the ratings? I'd say, well, we got good reviews. Yeah. Because like, nobody watched. But Critical then, darlings. Yes. But then between Brain Candy and the year 2000, uh, our repeats went on in Comedy Central and in, um, in the States and in the, in the, what's it called in Canada? Comedy Channel. I, I get mixed up. And so that's where we got our following. And that's where the demand, um, the, the, I don't know if the, the word demand is correct. Uh, yes, that's correct. The, you know, you the can polite demand. Um, uh, to see us live, um, it, it was the repeats, really. Yeah, and we, so yeah, so in two thousand, and I guess it was part, and also cause, yeah, because Kevin and Scott and I, the three of us were all living in L.A., so we were started hanging out together again socially, and then yeah, then we you know heard and Bruce was there, uh, so Scott, uh, Dave, and I hung out. Yes, yeah. Well, was Bruce there yet? Had he moved down yet? I think so. I can't remember now. Uh. And then, uh, yeah, so then we, uh, it, we did a tour in 2000 that was, uh, that sold out almost immediately. And that kind of got us back to, you know, doing, we started doing like a live tour every, but three to five years, kind of. Wow. And were you actually surprised? I mean, we as the public knew that we were still beloved, but did, were you shocked when you sold out? Yeah, a little, yeah. I remember, I remember being very Canadian. We're very Canadian. We're Canadian. We're very Canadian. Slightly optimistic. We're, and we're yeah, quietly be, optimistic. We're used to being disappointed. Um, <laughs> and the, yeah, uh, it, it was a little shocking because 
It was an invisible thing. Again, I'm going to say the repeats. We had no idea. I mean, we knew they were on, but we had no idea the um, the reaction they were getting and the people were watching. And um, and then we were becoming our version of popular, which which is to be a cult. Even before then, we weren't even big enough to be a cult. I think. <laughs> yeah. And then we got, we got popular enough to become a cult. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I remember, like, I'm like when we did that tour, we were playing the town hall in New York. And I think we went from three shows to seven shows that we had to book. Wow. And that was like, cause they just kept selling out and they kept adding days. And, uh, so that was, we were surprised by that. And hey, you celebrities know, were in the audience in New York and Los Angeles and things like that. That was exciting. Yeah. yeah. And we had cra crowds outside Boy. the theater, like shouting. And what? it was, uh, yeah. yeah, we felt like Martin and Lewis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we were that's right before the show. We were outside, we were uh, like on the third floor uh, above the theater. It was like an hour before the show, and Dave and I opened the window, and it was like Martin Lewis. You, you know, the old um footage of Martin Lewis hanging out the window in some yeah. famous New York theater and the crowd going crazy. Well, it was one eighth of that, but that was yeah, uh, the, the one eighth of it. And sure, there's five of us, and there was only two of them. So if you really do the <laughs> so math, math, so the math, one forty ninth of it. I, I, <laughs> yeah, they meant it though, they're really in it. Yeah. yeah. Huh? It's so they're coming to Amazon, um, which is, I mean, you know, fantastic, and, and streaming platform. Did that change what you were doing or how you're planning? I mean, there, there's certain things that were allowed, were they not wanting to do things? There were things that were allowed. I mean, watching the show, there's some fantastically spectacular, racy things going on that are genius. Well, thank Sorry. you. No, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, oh, I, well, you get it? <laughs> I think creatively, we just, we just did what we I've lost weight do. since the scene you're probably referring to. I've lost weight. <laughs> so have I. Yeah, David. Sorry, David and I both lost weight because uh, we had to see that scene for hours and hours and editing and stuff. I've lost a lot of head weight. That's like my head is much smaller than it was. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, right. Sorry, Dave. Go on. Uh, he'll answer your question really well, I swear. No, where? I forget what it was now. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 what was it like? The, the difference yeah. in the uh, ability, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, able to the do? times, the times yeah. are different. We were allowed to do more of what we could do in the nineties. Go, Dave. Yes, we, we for the most part, we we. Uh, I mean, we certainly didn't. I mean, the platform doesn't make any difference to us. Um, uh, we just, as, as we say, we say this. We've been saying it a lot lately, so it must be true. Uh, or it's the lie we've all agreed to. <laughs> uh, is that that we really only write we the only audience we write for is each other, um, you know because both because those are the the people we respect and who's who uh, who we want to like our stuff and we respect also, comically those, that's in, that's important yeah comically and also uh, those are the idiots who've got to get it past yeah uh, <laughs> so we only write we only write for you know for each other we don't really care about any outside voices or opinions. Um, and, uh, I mean, I'd say that's uh, the major difference with streaming is that it's global, um, uh, is a nice thing. The fact that the show is right now is available just about everywhere in the world all at once. Yeah. Uh, which wasn't true. You know, it's not true when we were doing, you know, network or cable. Uh, I don't get how it works. Like TV, there were ratings. I remember when our TV show was on at CBC, my mother put both her TV sets on because she thought it would improve our ratings. <laughs> yeah. Not knowing she wasn't the Nielsen family. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, your last name has to be. <laughs> I don't yeah. understand a word. I can't even pronounce the word. Dave, you said in the last interview. Uh, the algorithm. algorithm? Yes, there's an algorithm. I don't under I don't know what that is. I, I don't no know. Idea. I have no idea what an algorithm is. My my best guess is that it's sort of a ferocious semi simian beast that they keep in a cage <laughs> and they feed it. TV shows, and if it <laughs> if it likes them, then they say, "Oh, quick, make another one of those for the algorithm before it goes berserk." If it pulls your TV show out, then you get a second yeah. season. Yeah, We're testing it. Every, yeah, every yeah. Every yeah, we were pulled out. Yeah, we get a but second season. If the algorithm vomits up your scene, your show, then you're Ooh, dead. Yeah. 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 So we're just waiting to see how the algorithm's tummy uh... vomit or poo. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the great thing is. It's, it's, the group is so internationally known. It's great that it gets to get out there immediately. People get to hit and, and get to react and to get that yeah. out going. Yeah, it is nice. I mean, look, there's there's basically there there's two global platforms in the world, and it's Netflix and um, and uh, Amazon Prime, and we got to be on one of them, you know. And so it's so like it's it's a it's a very that part of it is very a different world from uh, the old days, right? 
and but it's nice because I mean I when, and I've traveled when I've traveled around. Like I remember being in uh, in Argentina and running into kids in the hall fans, and actually actually getting into my hotel room in Buenos Aires and turning on the TV, and the kids in the hall show came on. Wow! Uh, so it was shocking to me, and I, you know, meeting people from Chile and uh, that are kids in the hall fans, you know, in Peru. Uh, so uh, you know, it's like it's it's, it's nice that. Uh, it doesn't have to wait for, you know, what syndications, syndication doesn't right. exist anymore. Right. <laughs> you get it on TV. There it is. Yeah. So it's, yeah. so it's at, all at once all around the world. Not that I've read any, not that I've read anything from other parts of the world so far. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's true. Yeah. And so, so when you guys write, do you write your own sketches or do you also write a sketch and then sort of try it? Like, how does it work when you're, you're you know, together? I mean, well, it's kind of different. Sometimes we write in two, sometimes we write in ones. It was the time of the virus. So right. I would write, Dave and I still wrote together a lot, but um, it was the the lazy Zoom virus way that I um, one of us would write it and the other one would um, rewrite theirs and then I'd get it and we'd rewrite and send it back. It was more sending back and forth, half because of age and laziness and half because we weren't in the same room together. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but, and it was, yeah, mostly, you, you know, you know, you could, you, if it's a scene that features, you know, uh, you know, me and Kevin, then probably we wrote it, you know? Right. Right. Yes. And, Unlike Monty Python, right? They, they would write and they didn't always take the funny parts. Um, like who yeah. wrote the parrot sketch? Was it the Michael Palin team or was it the John Cleese team? I don't even know. I think it was the Cleese team, but I don't know. I oh, honestly yeah. don't know. But, and then, yeah. And then again, they would, yeah, they would. I mean, they were much, they, they were much, they, they functioned a lot more healthily than we did despite. Yeah, they were cooler. I, I wrote a really funny thing for you. Oh, thank you. Where uh, if, if we wrote a funny thing for Scott, first he'd get really mad at us for writing something. Uh, how dare we? <laughs> I remember I wrote, uh, Norm and I, uh, Norm, one of our writers, who's like the, uh, like a kid in the hall, only he, you don't see what he looks like. Um, right. In the old show, we he's not uh, even hideous. It's over... not like he's hideous. No, it's been hidden away. No, no. Just, just the weird. <laughs> he's yeah. really not hideous. Okay, you're saying hideous too much. Now he knows that Norman's really hideous. All right, I'm hideous. Okay. Oh yeah, he came over to my house one Saturday in the '90s during the TV show, and we wrote a. Uh, Mark and Scott had done a scene that we really liked. The characters, Gunther and whatever Scott's character was, the, there were a couple, and um, uh, we wrote a scene, and we thought it was hilarious. And afterwards, Scott stood up <laughs> at the read through. He stood up to get mad at us. I think he started off with, "How dare you." <laughs> On one hand, I understand, but on the other hand, we loved your scene so much. Right. <laughs> yeah. Saturdays are precious to me. Right. <laughs> you right. Think it's Saturday. Mm. And so uh, yes, we should have asked you first. Yes. Right for but, you. Right. But don't hate us for liking your character so much that it gave us an idea. Yeah. Well, also you two. I loved. I didn't know this. So I was. I was a bunch of researching about beyond the things that I already knew that you two met. As kids, basically, at, in uh, at Second City, and then you were a group together before the other three. You left. Yes, yeah. So With Dave and I and Luciano Casmiri. How did you find the other three guys? How did that happen? Um, oh, uh, those three guys. Yes, yeah, well, they were. In the, we were in a theater sports thing in Toronto, but right. theater sports started in Calgary, and Mark and Bruce were in another troupe called The Audience in Calgary. Um, so we had uh, we kids in the hall had heard about. Uh, you guys are a lot like um, the audience in Calgary, and um, and the audience heard you guys are all like the kids in the hall. Only you're better. <laughs> I'm sure that's what they said. <laughs> we were younger uh, anyway, and yeah. um, and they were the biggest thing in Calgary. But it was Calgary, so they moved to Toronto. No offense, Calgary. I'm joking. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we sort of just met and was comedy love and comedy first sight, and we started doing shows together. Well, and then Scott cool. joined the troupe by force. Yeah. <laughs> Grabbed up the street. Yeah. And we've just been avoiding eye contact ever since, and he won't go away. <laughs> Don't tell him to leave. <laughs> well, I, I have to tell you, it's it. what's amazing about this reboot, revival, whatever we're going to call it, thank God it's happening. Um, it, it has all the flavor and then some. Like, it, it feels like it's just it, nothing feels lost. It's so alive. There's still the irreverence, the. Sure. The, the darkness of it and then the silly humor of it, the balances is so strange. nice. I, I like that. That's good. Yeah. That's, I, great. That, that's well, I think that's, it's, it's been really great hearing that feedback from people and we've been hearing it a, a, quite a bit. And it's, I think it's the, we couldn't ask for anything else. That's, the, that was the most important thing to us is that 
getting together was that we just that we just keep doing stuff that that we think is comedically valid right and we certainly didn't want to you know do something that was just nostalgic or uh you know, just remember this character. <laughs> <laughs> well, here he is, slightly <laughs> less interestingly. <laughs> Draw it out for everyone. Yeah. Well, yeah, we get, yeah, I love that we get the hits though, but I, even then, the hits had been brought back, rethought, modernized, you know, in, its own, in their own era. And, it's, and there's nothing that's relying on that as a, as, a, as a crutch in any way. They end up being sort of refreshed, yeah. which is kind of amazing. And we're so bad at business too, because part of what you're saying is amazing, and part of what you're saying is because we're not smart enough to do. We got to get three head crushers in. We're not smart enough to do that. Yeah, uh, no, no. Okay. but and we weren't smart enough in the old show either. That's why yeah. There's only, there's only like this oh, out of a hundred episodes. There's only like a handful of head crusher sketches. Yeah. I love that. Which, which, it, but it feels like it was clearly enough that we remember it, but not so much that we got cloyed of the whole thing. Yeah, and, and the new. I mean, again, some of the new things are so. Uh, the one that I, I I've also seen everyone else been talking about, but why they're talking about it? It's the po post-apocalyptic radio host uh, that you do. Yeah. It, it it I mean, my take on this is certainly it's sort of the epitome in in the whole picture. It's the epitome of why you guys, I'm gonna say it, are so fantastic and so timeless. Is that it in the midst of all the wonderful wackiness and creativity and and pushing things to the edge this particular sketch or series of them comes up and it's so on the edge of funny question mark, but like touching and kind of topically insane in a fantastic way because it's in the moment of COVID, everyone's sort of stuck in their houses on screen going, we're having a great time doing something that we're doing. And then he died. <laughs> we get to close, like, please don't call me. Like, you know, so we, it, it hits all those great things together that we feel we're in it, yet it's funny but it's wildly touching amidst all the craziness. And it hits just the right note that never goes too far. It kind of, and I just said a couple of times, I'm gonna say it again, genius. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm, uh, it's, it's deeply gratifying to hear that. And it's, and a relief, because uh, <laughs> I wasn't sure, even when I, you know, presented the piece to the rest of the troop, I wasn't sure if it would work. Uh, okay. oh, where did it come from? How did it happen? I, I'm curious to know because it really is so magical. I well, I wrote I wrote it originally for actually for a variety show that my wife was putting on in Los Angeles, and I, I performed. I only I performed it once. Uh, and like and, way before COVID. Way yeah, before. Was, yeah, and it was a, a largely inspired by my despair about the you know living through the Trump administration, um, and and then it fed well into the, the you know covid and you know obviously i think and i rewrote it i rewrote it specifically for the tv show so i you know so i changed quite a bit of it um but it's one of those things where i i the, the you know the core of it was just i really loved the i the that moment of transition between between somebody going through the motions and 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 being only alive while while going through the motions of your job <laughs> and and then lapsing into this this deep well of despair <laughs> every time that that uh, that you're not live on air, and I just like isn't that, that the story of the kids in the hall? <laughs> it is. <Yeah. laughs> well, that's that's the book that's coming out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well of despair, the kids in the hall story. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the yeah. But that that is that the transition was the fun part to me, and I didn't. But I but it was one of the things where I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know how you well picked it the would perfect play. song. You picked the perfect song, and I was and there was never another consideration. I from the first from the moment I, I first started writing it, I, I the only song I ever considered using was Brand New Key, and I think if we could have gotten the rights to Brand New Key, I don't know if I would have done the sh done the sketch in right, the show. Right, right. It it's it all everything hit at the same time in the perfect way, and, and yeah. And, did you? Was there a doubt as we were filming it or putting it together that like is this going to be much or too little or too? Did oh, when know? we were shooting it, I kept thinking this is terrible. What was I thinking? <laughs> wow. This is like I kept going. This is this this isn't this can't work. So, you know, because it was a long it was a long day on set of just me, um, right. and because that's why we did that uh, that interview for the national, and and I'm the only one in costume. Uh, <laughs> 
So now, oh, now that's like, right. It was that day. That yeah. Day. Now people in the, watching know why I, why I suddenly had long red hair um, and dre <laughs> was dressed so badly. Um, and you know, people are wondering why we didn't do some live stuff. And this scene in particular, um, Dave hits the tone perfectly. And if it were live, it'd be a different tone because you started playing to the audience. And I wonder if it would have uh, perked it up just um, a little. Dave's a professional; it wouldn't perk up too much, but just Perfect. an inch more to, to change the tone. Yeah, it wouldn't have. It, yeah, it wouldn't have been the same. It wouldn't have been. Yeah, it would have been hard to uh, to not try and make it more accessible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, it was amazing. the isolation was amazing. Uh, uh, as well as that, the the fact that no, none of you sh um, shied away from being older. I thought that was amazing. You actually a lot of the sketches dealt with that or had that as a focal point. Or or we, we didn't think point. anyone would notice we were older. <laughs> I did. You pointed it out in the sketches. I was like, Wait a minute. Oh, they're ageless. It was our fault. Was, yeah, but done so beautifully and so so. Uh, to band it. Was there discussion about it or did that just happen? Well, like we're always hyper aware of ourselves. And uh, yeah. and and I and we're partly embarrassed that we're old, I think, in a way. I, no no one has said that. That's just my take on it. Partly embarrassed. They expect the kids in the hall. The, for Christ's sake, the name kids is in it. No, we're, so uh, at least I was thinking that all the time. And I think we all sort of think that in the uh, in our own, each different versions. Um, we're hyper aware and it's the truth. So I think we had to get it out of the way. We got it out of the way a lot this year, and if there's a second yeah. season, we may get it out of the way less. Um, <laughs> right. And, and I think we had a yes. We're older. Uh, we, we're not going to pretend. We're not going to wear wigs and pretend that it's our hair. Um, uh, when we wear a wig, you're going to know it's a wig, and uh, and we are older. And we're and it, it's also and we all we've always written stuff that's very like personal. Right. Uh, like we've always written kind of like we you know we, it gets disguised in various ways. <laughs> like you don't, you know, uh, but you know, all the, the, whenever pretty much, you know, any of the characters we play are, are very much informed by us and who we are, you know? So, and it was all, it was that way in the old days too. So, we, you know, we, you know, we're just, uh, you know, we're, we're, we are always trying ready, but things that have happened to us and things we've experienced and things we've thought about. And we Absolutely. just, you know, we just always find ways to disguise it in, in comedy. Right, right. You know, when I was a young kid in the hall, I never thought I'd hear myself say something I said to the uh, um, hair and makeup people. We were um, talking about, uh, I was playing a pregnant woman in a scene, drop average, and I never thought I'd say, uh, oh, I'm, I'm pregnant, I'm playing a much, much younger person than I am. How much younger? Like 45? Much, much younger. <laughs> And, and, and I meant and, it, and it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the other and, were... and their reaction was, ooh, like the, their faces, oh, that's going to be hard. <laughs> Pretend. 45? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, the, other, the other thing is we're now old enough to play a lot of the characters we played, you know, 30 years ago. Right. Yeah. We're now the, we're now right. the age of the people. Like your boss play. character. Yeah, I'm actually his age now. It's funny. Well, yeah. uh, and it's gold. And by the way, Kevin, you make a really good woman. Both of you do, actually. Thank you. Speaking of which, um, the character in um, the mailbox, the mail, mail latch, the, the gate latch scene. Yeah. Oh, that, well, yes, yes. It, it's, whether it's intentional or not, you give, you're giving me such vibes of Isabella Rossellini. It was uncanny. <laughs> uh, I've, 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 I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's not intentional. Dave just looks like her. Yeah. It, or maybe maybe Dave used to make me look more like her than I normally do. I don't know, but no. you just look like her. It's I do look like her, and we, and we used to get mail about it. And uh, you're kidding. So much so that uh, uh, I did Conan O'Brien once, and I was on the same show as Isabella Rossellini. And so the Conan O'Brien show said, "Do you mind if we get a, a wig made up that looks like her hair does today, <laughs> and we bring it out and put it on you while you're sitting next to her?" And and I said yes, and then. Because they did that on Conan, uh, I remember getting back to Toronto and uh, Judy Cooper Seeley and uh, Jerry Wraith were hair and makeup people who really, they, they, cre they created the characters more than we did. Sure, I understand. They had uh, like, like a thousand magazines opened up in the makeup room, all turned to pages, pictures of Isabella Rossellini. <laughs> and all the and wigs and make every all over the room, <laughs> and they were they became determined to make me look as much like Isabella Rossellini as they could. 
And, they, and I think they did a first sketch, a Mark, one of Mark's sketches. And I remember, and I remember actually I'm, the, the camera sent kind of, uh, uh, came down on a, like a crane shot onto Mark and I in this museum. And I remember in the studio audience, when the, the camera came down on and revealed this character that Jerry and Judy had created, there was an audible gasp in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Are we watching Blue Velvet? (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. That's fantastic. I love it. Um, uh, I mean, you've sort of alluded to the ups and downs for you guys as a group, you know, obviously, and and any group that's been together for a long time, you have all that. There's nothing expose, but all that. But now, all older, have you all, you find each of you or any of you mellowed? You just found ways to be together? Have you each changed? You know what I mean? Like what you, you all seem really great and you're doing the show and it sounds like it's going really well. Yeah. I wish I've... one of us had mellowed. That would have been. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce talks a lot about mellowing, uh, <laughs> but that's about as far as it goes. Yeah. Okay. As a whole, we're mellower. Yeah. Yeah. In a way, I've become angrier, but when I'm part of the group, I'm, I'm mellower in my anger. Scott will always be Scott. There's, there's no way around that. Yeah. It's, and it's and there's no mellow for Scott's going to be an unmellow eighty nine year old. Yeah, the dry the drywall will never be safe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. I got gotcha. you. But as a whole, we're nicer to each other. Um, Listen, that counts. Yeah. I always quote this: uh, "Can't prevent Beethoven." Um, they're um, they're a band that Dave and I really like, and they were uh, a young um, band that fought a lot. And when they made their comeback in their forties. I remember reading a Rolling Stone magazine that, where they said, um, uh, you guys fought a lot. Um, uh, do you fight anymore? I said, no, we don't fight as much. Uh, when you're in your 20s and you work together, it's your uh, job to be an asshole to each other. But then um, when you're older, you th- you know you'll get more work done if you're less of an asshole to each other. And I think that's, we're still assholes to each other. Don't be disappointed with it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I would, I would hope for nothing left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we're better. Yeah. Finding a way through. Yeah. yeah. Well, that might be that might be because we only did eight episodes. <laughs> okay. If we turn twenty, even seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Point. Uh, right. And, and well, then um, towards towards it really, but but uh, uh, do you think it's partly the personalities that help create the character? Part of the passion, part of the fire, part of the the, the uh, complications that make you guys great at what you do. Yeah, absolutely. I, oh, definitely, definitely. And it's it's also just that in that environment of knowing when you're that when when you're with the other guys, you know that you're not going to have to explain anything. Right. So it makes it makes it easier to create stuff because we understand each other so well, and we and we get what the joke is, and like you know, like you know, like like all of us get a great mark premise, you know. Right. Yes, and other people wouldn't get it right away because because uh, Mark is the king of subtle, and uh, they wouldn't get it right away. Um, we very rarely hear um, "I don't get it" from each other. We do hear "I don't like it," but yeah. I get it. Like, yeah, we don't hear that. Yeah. 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 Whereas you know, I think all of us in other uh, work situations have seen those blank stares. Yeah. You know, like, how is that comedy? <laughs> you know. We've all I, could, I wasn't there, but I could only imagine Mark and Saturday Night Live pitching one of his brilliant subtle ideas like to a whole room of uh of writers from Harvard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that how they would take it. Yeah. Uh, uh Kevin, you I saw an article you said uh that you feel like sketch comedy is what God gifted you. That was a skill you were given. Do you feel like that? Oh yeah, I say that a lot. I say that a lot. Uh, Dave's heard this a lot, that I'm always mad. That's the skill I got. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, he doesn't say it. In, he doesn't say it in reverence. Yeah, I don't say it in reverence. That's it. And as I said the other day, I didn't say this before, but Dave's heard this before. I hadn't said that before. That uh, it's not even stand-up comedy. Like everyone likes stand-up comedy. It's the poor cousin of stand-up comedy. Sketch comedy. That that is such a silly thing to be good at. Uh, like there weren't that many troops until like the '90s and us and the Stain right. and Bob and Dave. Um, so uh, why did we even think that we could be <laughs> like a troop together? Uh, there weren't very many troops like uh, until the nineties. Like, and now there's lots of troops. Now it's like uh, uh, the way rock bands used to be. There were always a thousand yeah. rock bands in the city in Toronto, and now there's right. like thousands of comedy troops in Toronto. Yeah, but then yeah, in the eighties, uh, and they're all good. Yeah, but I mean, there really was Python than us, 
as a as an actual unit. Right. Yeah. You know, like even SCTV that I love was a theater company that became this right. unit on a TV show. But they, they yeah, definitely- Yeah, they auditioned to be together. Yeah. They became a unit for sure, which yeah. is harder to do in a way. Yeah, in their T- Yeah, they became a unit in their TV show. Right. Um, you know, which is also kind of true of Python. They were, they, were from, they were guys who worked on different TV shows that were put together. And it was some producer who said, you two should work with you two and then get Eric Idle. But still they'd known each other. Uh, some of them were Oxford guys, some of them were Cambridge guys, yeah, but right. they Different TV shows, they they knew each other. I they mean, we're more reason. organic than them. Yeah, but but at least but Python was definitely a group that y- you knew it's only these guys. Yeah, there's <laughs> not gonna there's not gonna be a new cast next season, right? You know, like that thing. And we sort of have the chemistry of beautiful losers because there were like uh, before there were five of us, there were like eleven of us or twelve of us, and everybody was great. Gary Campbell, I thought he was going to be the new Steve Martin, and he's a very successful, brilliant writer, and he works on this new show. Um, Frank Van Keegan, I thought, was going to be the new Andy Kaufman. Um, Luciano Casimiri is the funniest guy Dave and I have ever um, met. But when people kept quitting because they got successful writing jobs or went to Second City, and it became us five losers, um, it's, I, I don't know if it's the magic of the chemistry of the five of us or the number five, but that's when things clicked. And it wasn't that the weakest members left. Uh, <laughs> no, we were all strong members, and they all uh, and then they left. And um, it's something about the uh, the chemistry of being beautiful losers, I think. Yeah, so and then, yeah, together. and I think we were the five. We were the five guys who were prepared to kind of put everything on the line for it too. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. There any regrets? Yeah. But there was nothing else I could do. So again, yeah. beautiful loser. Yeah, Ke- yeah. Kevin and I were movie ushers together. Yeah, That's you know? saw, which is hilarious. We ushered ET. We yeah. ushered Tootsie. Yeah. We ushered Tootsie. We ushered Meaning of Life. Meaning of Life. Uh, yeah. What theater? Well, yeah. in Central Parkway Cinemas in Mississauga, which is long gone. And then you'll know this one, Carlton. Yeah, Carlton was downtown oh. when it when it became an art house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. That's awesome. So uh yeah. My and new partner, Dave. We we ushered uh, the, the 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 number one hit from France. Yeah. My new partner. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I remember we also ushered, because uh, I just saw Spike Lee being interviewed at, in a theater here in New York, that we ushered, uh, she's got to have it. Yeah. So there, that's how long we've been around. That's the history. But together to which I love, and, and it's funny, you can tell in your sketch together, it's it's such magic. You can feel that there's such history. Yeah. Uh, well, where the, Kevin and I used to, we, we had kind of a, we had a following as ushers. Yeah, <laughs> there are people who people who come to see us be cinemas. funny at Carlton. Yeah, <laughs> Andrea oh, Martin you. used to too. I mean, I don't know if she came. I don't think she came to see the ushers, but she, uh, she was happy when she when we were on, and and, and she uh, we sort of like spritzed with her and stuff, uh, and it was, that was so amazing because mm-hmm. it's Andrea was, Martin. What was what was the what was the the, the routine you guys? Oh, going on? I'm sure. Not, I don't know what would sound funny now. <laughs> there, well, I remember she was late for a movie once, and Dave wasn't there one, and I. Uh, and I pretended that we were in a war and that we were two soldiers crawling to the front and she crawled on the ground with me. <laughs> she crawled on the ground and she said soldier stuff and she was pretending to shoot. Um, and I thought, because she could easily hated this guy who, oh, he's another young comedian who wants to impress me. She wasn't like that at all. She played with me. And then uh, we got her a seat and I said, um, yeah, I'll go get you some water or some soldier yeah. thing. And I left and let her watch the movie. I'll always remember the day that I was working the, uh, I was on barista duty in the cafe. Dave got that because he was the classy one. <laughs> and, yeah. and, uh, and Kevin came, Kevin, Kevin came out and uh, these uh, gentlemen uh, with, uh, with uh, Italian accents, I believe. From Guelph. From Guelph. Uh, came, yeah, we came up to Kevin. And there was a, one gentleman who stood silently just glaring. And then the, the older other mafia, the older godfather like one. Yeah. And the other gentleman said, uh, what you did uh, earlier was very funny, but, uh, and that's very good. It's good that it was funny because normally, uh, someone does something like that. Uh, we would have to kill you. And he was clenching my arm and I'm claustrophobic and I went crazy. And he also said, um, we're going to let it go this time. Cause it was <laughs> very funny. Yeah. But I remember and Kevin got really mad at them and started shouting at them. And I had to come over to Kevin and say, Kevin, yeah, mafia, Kevin, mafia, mafia. When they say kill you, it's not a, it's not a phrase. It's not a term. 
Uh, they've true. had to push me back kind of hard because I. They mean actually, right? They mean actually, Kevin Mafia, Mafia, Kevin Mafia. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but but the fact that Kevin was Kevin was funny enough that it saved his life. Yeah, <laughs> that's the point that we should take on giving. Comedy and crazy enough to life. almost give them his life. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's a whole other sketch right there. That's, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Yeah. Um. So if you have advice for a, any up and coming comedians or sketch artists or, or sketch groups, what would you say to them? Ignore us. Yeah. That's the main thing. Uh, that's actually good advice. Find yeah. your own voice. If that's your point. Find your... Yeah. Well, I used to tell people study, study the stuff that you, that you love and study it really hard and learn everything you can about it and then do everything you can to not be like that. Yeah. But in a way it seeps in and it enriches the way that you do it anyway. I also say, um, do it all the time. Um, write all the time. Uh, if you get to go on stage all the time, go on stage all the time. Uh, if you don't have any ideas and write, yeah. learn improv and improvise all the time. Yeah. Do it all the time, and then you sort of silently, invisibly get better just yeah, by doing it. Yeah, don't waste a lot of time thinking about what you want to do. Yeah. Right. right. Just be doing it. Work yeah. It. Yeah. 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 Act yeah. Action strengthens. Yeah, it strengthens the muscles. You know, yeah. whatever they are. Yeah. yeah. The comedy muscles, in this case. Well, they're, they're putting in that 10,000 hours, whatever it is, you know, to be a pro, whatever that means. You know, like yeah. It's true, though. It's true. And I always feel, I, this is my stupid theory of life, which is wrong. I'm making it up. But uh, I think uh, a person gets a lucky break in the career they want once or twice a year. But if they're not ready for it, it's invisible to them. Uh, and if you're ready, for, like the kids in the hall, we performed every Monday the Rivoli from 84 to 85. And we did a, like a pretty much a new show, new sketches every Monday. And we wrote a lot during the days. We were working all the time. And uh, in the summer of 85, um, it was Mark's idea to do a best of at a theater and it was just the time that Lauren Michaels was sending people to because he had come back for Saturday Night Live after five years off and he was scouting people so the um, Yvonne Fasson um, uh, who was the NBC late night president or whatever the term is the king uh, nice came yeah, and saw our, yes came and saw our last show um, and we, we were ready we were ready for our lucky our lucky break wasn't invisible because we were ready so you work hard and be ready but yeah one or two lucky breaks a year I swear to God yeah yeah we had we had the skills at the time that we had the opportunity. Yeah. Right. That's the lucky, right? That's yeah. Work for lucky. Work, Work yeah. for lucky. Yeah. yeah. Do you believe in fate? Do you believe that it was all meant to be? I mean, you had meeting and meeting the other three and the other you know, the 12 and that, you know, that the, all this way went. You feel like it was somehow. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's. It's, I think it's a, it was just, it's just uh, a lot of, a lot of good coincidences, you know, and. Right. Uh, which may be faith. Dave and I could easily be uh, two movie managers in Toronto who meet once a week and talk about, uh, complain about each other's movies. Uh, people aren't coming to movies anymore. Like, like yeah. could, that could easily happen. Uh, yeah. The funny movie managers in Toronto. Yeah. It's a union now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, as yeah. it should be. But uh, yeah, no, I don't, I mean, no, I mean, I certainly don't think, uh, I believe in that anything is fate. I mean, it would certainly luck. Yeah, as Kevin said, I mean, because there's certainly a lot of people who started out at the same time of, as us that were really, uh, really great. Right. Who never got had that lucky moment or who never found the group of people they needed to make it all work, you know? Um, That's another thing. And I know that I keep interrupting Dave and you want to get off of it, Tom, but uh, I, people, I'll take it on, on the it. 80s. I, I, this is going too far, but it was sort of Seattle in the nineties and Liverpool in the uh, early sixties for comedy. There was the kitchen hall, Norm Macdonald, Mike Myers, Sean Cullen, um, uh, Colin Mockery, and so uh, many others um, that are Debbie Thaker, uh, Sandra Seamus. Like it was mm -hmm. a, like a special time for comedy and we were all friends and yeah. we were all. Yeah. Uh, Nor Norm Macdonald was there doing stand up and right. Yeah. Right. And Norm Macdonald could straddle both worlds. He could be a hidden yuck yucks, and then he'd go uh, to the Rivoli in Queen Street and be um, uh, like a hit. There were two different worlds back in the eighties, though. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. There was like a meshing. It wasn't like a real support of, of the other. No, Norm could do it. Norm could. Uh, Norm oh. can mesh. He, he yeah. Could, he could like uh, be big from the, the people from Mississauga. I say that because I'm from Mississauga. Um, or he could do the the Queen Street hipsters and be uh, and do such a uh, just as well. Mm. Yeah, wow. yeah, and Norm Norm did a uh, warm up for us in studio a couple yeah. times. Oh, you're kidding! That's great. yeah, yeah. And did either of you ever tried set comedy? 
I did. Dave it. is a real stand-up comedian. And so did, and so did Kevin. Kevin did stand up. Dave is a real stand up comedian. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I think and Bruce and Scott have done stand up. Uh, yeah. Mark, I, uh, I thought it's something Mark's interested in. It would be interesting to see what he would do. It would be something like, an, yeah. it would be some kind of anti comedy. If he ever got excited enough to do something, which means it would be good, I think it would be really interesting to see what Mark would do. Yeah. But there was a period about about 10 years ago. I guess I was, I actually did, did it pretty extensively for three years. I was out on see, the road. real stand up. Amazing. Yeah. It's past because you were busy doing a lot of like, doing a lot of TV and film stuff. Yeah, but this was this was when when TV and film stuff uh, stopped wanting me, so <laughs> I did stand up for a few years. Uh, is the business? God knows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you is, is is sketch always the first love for both of you at this point? You do both both like voiceover and TV and movies. I think is this kind of where the heart lives for both of you. It's it's like it's I think it's the it's the art form that we're best at. Yeah, and okay. I think it is an art form. I think it's uh, it is for sure. Maybe yeah. we fought against it for a while, or maybe, uh, but it's what we did. Well, um, um, uh, Martin Short was in SCTV. Then he he was off at SCTV for a year, and then uh, Saturday Night Live asked him to do it, and he said, uh, "No, no, I've done sketch comedy." Then his best friend, I forget who it was, is not someone famous. I think said, "But isn't that what you do? And isn't this the biggest forum for you to do it?" And that's when he went on Saturday Night Live, and I think uh, that's sort of when his career really took off. Right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you both so much for doing this. I cannot tell you what it was. It was a fun interview. Thank you. Fingers crossed for second, third, as many seasons as you all want. It's a pleasure for all of us to be part of it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you.